before we get started, I want to go over real quickly where we've been and where we're going. What we're working toward is creating a field that will fill in the gaps of the rational numbers. Remember, we started that we started by saying that rational numbers have gaps. For instance, there's no solution to this in rational numbers. So the real numbers, we're going to construct the real numbers specifically in order to fill in those gaps. And basically all of calculus is based on uh, the result of filling in those gaps. And before we, before we construct the real numbers, what we've been doing for the last several videos is just going over uh, some general concepts which are necessary to construct in a rigorous manner what it is that we're talking about. So we looked at, um, defined quickly what, what a set is, what an order on a set is, what a field is. Oh, and then before that we did the least upper bound property And it's this concept that will allow us to fill these gaps. Then we, the last few, we've been looking at what a field is, what the field axioms are, and um, all of the familiar rules that go along with that, like, you know, x plus zero equals x and so on. So the last thing that we have to do, what we're going to be doing with this video is giving the properties that make an ordered field and then some, some properties of those. And so finally, the reason we've had to look at these three things is that these three things together are what make a real number system. So rational numbers are already an ordered field. Every number has an inverse, there's an identity, multiplication, addition, and so on. The problem with rational numbers is they don't have a least upper bound property. So by adding the least upper bound property, to the rational numbers, we will create a, a new set that will have a solution to x squared equals 2. So the last thing we have to look at is an ordered field. And then after that, the theorem that there exists an ordered field. with the least upper bound property. So remember the cool thing about um, doing this stuff abstractly is that we've talked about the axioms, we've even concluded things from those rules, but we don't actually know if such a set even exists. That's what we're gonna have to prove here. And then finally, after we construct it, we're going to show that in fact, there is that uh, set is unique. And I'll talk more about what that means later. But basically, there's only one set of real numbers. Okay, so ordered theories. field is a field whoops which is also an ordered set such that One, x plus y less than x plus z. Oh, x plus y is less than x plus z if uh, x, y, z are elements of f. 
and y is less than z. So again, as with all the axioms for fields, this is something that we, we all know it from grade school, that if you have uh, two numbers, one is less than the other, and you add the same thing to both sides, the equality doesn't change. Then x plus y will be less than x plus z. And two, that xy is greater than zero if x and y are elements of f, x is greater than zero, and, and y is greater than zero. x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero. In other words, if x and y are both positive, then the, their product is positive. Yes, and just to state, to state this, if x is greater than zero, we call x positive. And if x is less than 0, we call x negative. And again, what I like about abstract math is that you have to define all of this stuff. It's really easy to just use your intuition, but you can actually get in trouble there because these things aren't necessarily true with every field that you might encounter. And so what I want to point out here is that we've already looked at what an ordered set is. It's a set where uh, between any two elements, um, the two elements are either one is less than the other, uh, greater than the other, or they're equal. That's an order on a set. And so what we're doing here, that's just an order on a set. What this is doing is combining the order concept with our field axioms, right? Because it says what happens with, um, it connects it to addition in some way and it connects it to multiplication in some way. So these together will make an ordered field. And again, this is, this is obvious, but just to state it, for example, Q is an ordered And something that you may or may not know, and something that we're going to get to in, in several weeks from now when we start looking at complex numbers, is that although real numbers are an ordered field, complex numbers are not an ordered field. There's no way to put an order on complex numbers. If you have 3 plus 4i and 4 plus 3i, which one of those is bigger than the other? You can't, you can't do it. So... It's interesting that in order to make complex numbers, we have to give up the order on the field. It's still a field, it still has the least upper bound property, but it doesn't have an order. But that's an aside. We'll get to that later. Okay, so with ordered fields, all of the familiar, all the familiar rules for working with them apply to every ordered field. So things like if you have an inequality, if you multiply both sides by the same number, if the number is positive, it preserves it. It preserves the inequality. If the number is negative, it reverses the inequality. Every square is positive. All of these are concepts that, that we're familiar with from school, and they all come from, they're true of all ordered fields. And so what I want to show you again, what's again interesting is in order to define an ordered field, these are the only two axioms that we needed. These two things are the only two things that we're having to posit. Everything else that you know about less than, equal than, adding two si to both sides and so on can all be deduced from this. That's quite amazing because once again, over time, the mathematicians have boiled down what's essential and what's deducible. And this is all we need in order to make everything that we know about ordered fields true. So, okay. Ordered field properties. A if x is greater than 0, then 
minus x is less than 0 and vice versa. So if x is positive, then uh, minus x is negative, and if x is negative, then minus x is positive. B, if x is greater than 0 and y is less than z, then xy is less than xz. This just says, again, that if x is positive, then if you multiply both sides of an inequality by a positive number, it maintains the inequality. C, if x is greater than 0, I'm sorry, if x, if x is less than 0 and y is less than z, then x, y is greater than x, z. So this switches the inequality. If x is negative, then the inequality switches. If y is less than z, then x, y is greater than z, then x, z. D uh, is that if x does not equal 0, then x squared is greater than 0. In particular, 1 is greater than 0. So again, this one's really interesting because, again, it's, it's connecting the field axioms, multiplication, with the ordered axioms, with the, the ordered field axioms. Because if you multiply any two numbers, positive or negative, again, this is something we all know, but if you multiply any two numbers, positive or negative, then the product is greater than zero. That doesn't have to be true, but we're gonna be able to prove that it is true simply from the two axioms that make an ordered field. The, that, that you know, x plus y is greater than x plus z, if y is greater than z, and that if x and y are both greater than zero, then the product x, y is greater than zero. So x squared is always greater than zero, no matter what, and in particular, one is greater than zero. I also find that very interesting because we, with the field axioms, we have a multiplicative identity, an additive identity. There's no reason to think there's any relationship between them. In particular, we, we saw some uh, relationship between them in the last video, but also, in addition, one is gonna be bigger than zero. So the multiplicative identity is not gonna, is gonna be greater than the uh, additive identity. And finally, so this shows that just by these simple, these sh few little rules, you add a lot of structure to, to the set that, that has these, that satisfies these axioms. And then E, if zero is less than X is less than Y, then zero is less than one over Y is less than one over X. This is the one rule that I think, at least myself, I didn't learn as, as deeply as the other ones. Like these are all second nature, I think for, for most people, they certainly are for me. But this one, I didn't learn it that deeply. And it's something that I actually have to think about, that if two is less than three, that means that one third is less than one half. That's actually something we can prove for any ordered field for the real numbers. That's always true. Okay, so to prove them, Okay, here is the link to the first video in this chapter. Here is the link to the previous video. Here is the link to the next video. And click here to subscribe and please join me on Patreon. The link to that is below in the description. Thank you.